Hey guys, welcome back to another video and today I'm going to show you how to use slicing software if you're a beginner. So what I'm going to do is go to the web, grab an STL file, import that into our slicing software and then we're going to slice it up with all the appropriate settings and I'll explain them all. And then we'll export the G-code to an SD card where we can get it to our 3D printer. So if you are new to my channel and you want to see more videos like this on 3D printing, hit that subscribe button and you won't miss any videos from me. So, let's get stuck straight in. First thing you'll notice is that I'm using Slicer Prusa Edition. And this is a slicing software provided by Prusa on their website. So if you haven't got this downloaded and installed yet, what you want to do is go to prusa3d.com forward slash drivers. Any links I mention will be in the description below, so just go check them out. Uh, once you're on the website, you'll be greeted with uh, multiple different models of printer. So find which one you've got. In my case, I'm using the Mark III. And it provides you with, with everything you need for that particular printer. So we've got a firmware package. I'll also be doing a video on this. So if you want to see that, again, subscribe and you won't miss it. We've got Handbook, which, you know, is the user manual in the Handbook. Really handy and drivers and apps and this is the one we want so drivers and apps will give us everything we need to get up and running so download that for your machine wherever you're running and when you're done come back and we'll continue with the video so once you've done that you will be greeted with a page like this once you've opened the software and you'll see that we've basically just got a flat plane which represents the heat bed of the printer in terms of the dimensions so now you're thinking, well, there's nothing there, right? It's completely empty and we that's not cool because we want to add some 3D models. So you might be thinking, you know, where where can I get some 3D models? And one of the best sites right now to get free 3D models is a website called Thingiverse. Again, I'll leave a link below. Thingiverse is basically an awesome open source website for 3D models. So people out there will design stuff in CAD and they'll just share it with everyone for free and it, you can literally download it straight away you don't have to sign up it just gives you the file it's awesome go check it out so for this tutorial I'm going to use a FlexiRex model by this user Dr. Lex and we're just going to download that and as you can see download straight away no signing up nice and simple and once you've downloaded a model that you want um, you don't have to use this one you can just search anything up in the user bar or you can go to explore things and you can see all the different featured models so once you've found the model that you want download it and now we're going to import it into our slicing software and this is super easy as well so there's a button in the top left it says add you want to click that Navigate to the folder that you've downloaded and you want to find the STL file. In this case, flexireximproved.stl. Click that and click open. As you can see, that imports it straight onto the heat bed in the software and it looks awesome. This little guy is pretty cool. So, on the bottom left, there are three tabs. So, we've got the 3D tab, which is the initial one that your model will be imported to. Then we've got the preview tab. This will show you uh, all the different layers once you've sliced your model. And the layers tab also shows you more about the layers. So let's go back to the 3D tab. And in the top right, what, what, what I will say first is if you're happy with the model and you don't want to adjust it, we can go straight to the print settings. But there are other things you can do, like you know, if you want to rotate it, you can click on the model, hit that rotate button. And you can do cool things like you can just rotate it. Uh, you can stand it up if you wanted to. But we're not going to mess too much with that. You can explore those kind of things yourself. You can right click and there are most, more settings in there. So we're just going to concentrate on the print settings. Okay, so the print settings then. What we want to do is set up all these so that we're optimizing it for our printer and our materials. So for print settings, what we're basically doing here is setting the layer height. And what this does is provide you a way of 
gaining detail in the print. So if you think about how it prints, it prints one layer at a time all the way to the top until it's done. So if we set that layer height low, that means we have more layers in the whole print, which means ultimately you get more detail. But with that comes more time because it, it'll take longer, you know, there's more layers. So it's a bit of a trade-off between detail and time. If you're printing sort of figurines and things like that that you're going to paint or things that you want to show off on your desk or something, detail might be important to you. So you'd want to choose ultra detail, which is the lowest layer height. But if you're sort of printing mechanical stuff and you just want little structural 3D pieces, you're not going to be too bothered about detail. You can just choose fast. Typically, Optimal is a really good sort of well-rounded setting. I've printed things in Optimal and they come out so, so detailed. Um, I stick to Optimal nine times out of ten. I'd recommend you do the same. The next setting is filament. This is basically where you select your plastic. Now, if you've ordered Prusa's printer from the website, they typically provide their own PLA with their printer, and it'll be a grey PLA usually. So check the reel, and it should have a label on it, and it'll say what type of plastic it is. I, I would say it's probably PLA. So if you have Prusa's PLA in this list, you can see there is a setting for Prusa PLA, so you just want to select that. If you're like me, and you can see there I'm using white PLA, that's a generic PLA that I bought third party. So that is not listed here in the um, slicer. So all you want to do is select gener generic PLA. If you're using a different type of plastic like PET or ABS, you would do the exact same thing, same principle applies. Once you've found your plastic and you've set it, the next thing we want to do is choose the printer. This should be already set because you've just downloaded the software for your printer it'll know which one you've got. Fill density, this is a really important one. Uh, a good way to demonstrate this would be to slice it first and I can show you what it is. So to slice your model, all you wanna do is hit this slice now button. So you wanna click the model, slice now. You'll see a bar in the bottom right and it'll shoot across really quickly if it's a simple, simple model. If it's a bit more complex, it might take a while. So on the bottom left, we want to go back to the preview tab. And you can see that a model is now um, into the preview tab. And there's some sliders on the right hand side. And what these do is show you each layer of the print. So if you drag the slider to the bottom, you can see exactly how it will print one layer, at a one layer at a time. And it's really cool. So as you can see inside the print, we've got this sort of cross pattern inside and that's what the fill density does it basically adds some integrity to your model so it makes it structurally structurally sound um, you can change this and increase it but it depends on what you're trying to print really um, so just to demonstrate if I change this now to 70% and I re-slice bear in mind anytime you change the setting it'll need to be re-sliced to apply that those settings so just keep that in mind as you can see there um, we've now got a much denser infill and what this does is it adds strength but it also uses more plastic so again it's that kind of trade-off between how much plastic do you want to use how much strength do you need and it depends what what purpose the print is for you know if you're printing little models as i said it probably doesn't need to be that strong. So it's up to you. It, that's why I love this 3D printing stuff because it's so customizable to each person and their needs. You can really do whatever you want. It's awesome. So typically 20% is a solid rounded value to go for. Any more than 20% and honestly you're probably just wasting plastic. As you probably know, reels of PLA, you know, they're not that cheap and you want to get as many prints out of them as you can so 20 percent honestly that's a really good value to go with so choose all the settings you need then as i said you want to hit slice now and it'll do this it'll show you it'll take you to the preview tab if not you can just click it and you can look through 
all the different layers and just you know see if you're happy with it if you want to change something you can go back change it re-slice it and have another look so once you're happy with it we now need to put the G code onto our printer so that we can print it so our printer doesn't need the STL file like the slicer does the printer doesn't understand an STL file what it understands is G code and G code is basically an instruction set for a printer so it'll have information like coordinates you know positional coordinates where where to go where the X axis should be where the Y axis should be and also information about the extruder you know how much how much plastic to extrude at certain points and in order to export this it's super easy again you know there's a button here export G code you just want to hit that find your SD card on your machine which you want to take out of your printer click save and it puts the G code on the SD card and all you want to do then is chuck your SD card back in your printer preheat your printer for the appropriate plastic that you chose remember that that's an important one you need the correct heat settings for the plastic and again read the la the label on your reel of plastic there'll be recommended settings on there each plastic is different and just go with what the manufacturer says so once you've done all that you should be pretty much ready to go you can print your model straight away and that's about it for this video i uh, hope you've enjoyed i hope it was helpful to you if it was please subscribe and consider leaving a thumbs up i'd really appreciate that it helps the channel grow and it shows your support for me that's it thanks for watching have a great day i'll see you on the next video